What's up everybody? Today uh, we are going to take you through the process of tasting beer. I'm here with, with John who's a BJCP master judge and he's going to kind of show me how to taste a beer step by step. All right. It's going to be fabulous. Join us. So what are we drinking today, Josh? Today we are drinking Heretics California Dry Hopped IPA. Okay. Which I, so first thing I think we want to do when we think about like judging a beer, or evaluating a beer is what is the beer style? And, right. and so, um, you know, this is an American IPA. So the label gives you more information. They've dry hopped it or presumably they've dry hopped it, uh, but it's an American IPA. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. You want to put it in the framework of beer styles and go from there. Give yourself a baseline to work on. Exactly. Of. Yeah. I can smell it from here. It's dry hopped. There you go. So, <laughs> so there's a few different steps when we when we do this beer evaluation that it's like people often just want to pick up their beer and start drinking it. Right. Try not to do that. Like, there's a couple things that happen with beer as it's in the glass. The first is the aromas. They go away. Like some of these things just volatilize right out of the beer. So you want to do the aroma first because you might smell things right away. But if you come back in 10 minutes, they're not going to be there anymore. They might be gone. So do the aroma first. Think about, you know, what am I getting in my nose out of this beer? So what are you getting out of this one? I get, I get fruit, and I'm trying to yeah. place what kind of fruit that is. Yeah, this is definitely like this newer American hop fruit characteristic. Yeah. Right? A little bit of guava, maybe a little bit of citrus. Yeah, and I always confuse papaya and guava and all of those yeah. fruits I didn't grow up with, right? But <laughs> but definitely, yeah. Yeah, citrus so, is there for sure, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the aroma, what about the malts? I mean, we want to think about hops we talked about. What about malts? And then are there any other sort of yeast characteristics or things like that? I don't get a lot of uh, yeast characteristic, but I do get... A, a, a lightly sweet malt characteristic. Yeah, no, and I think that's about what you look for in an, an American IPA. You don't want a yeast f profile other than maybe there's some fruit esters that are probably lost behind those hops. Right. So you might just pick up on some, you know, some slightly fruity characteristics that you would probably say could be hops, could be yeast type of a thing. But the malt should just be the malt. Nothing should really jump out there, and and you don't want phenols or something you might find in a Belgian beer or an infected beer, a different type of phenol, but right. none of that's here. No. Nope. So the so, next thing we want to do is, is look at it, all right, and and think about like the color of the beer, the carbonation, how the bubbles are coming out of the out of the, the beer itself and, and how the head is retained and how it's formed and all of that. And when you, on the beer judge score sheet it's like three points out of 50. So usually you don't have to spend much time on it. Yeah. Yep, color's where it should be. Head's great. It's clear, like really clear, bright clear. And look at those bubbles coming up. That's pretty cool. Love it. Yeah, so that's a three out of three right there. Three out of three. Yeah. So what's next? And then you taste it. Just right into the tasting. Right into the tasting. And so a lot like aroma, you know, what are your first impressions? I get a, a really balanced hot bitterness, mm -hmm. uh, distinct but balanced. I get a little bit of malt, mm -hmm. and I, I think that kind of helps with the balance, and then I get a ton of hop flavor. Right. So you bring up an interesting point, balance. So balance is, is, is tricky because you do need to think about the context of the beer style. So to me, this is like super bitterness, hop forward. You know, when you, balance is about where your malts are in relationship to where your hops are, and particularly that hop bitterness. And so balance for an IPA is not the same thing as balance for um, an American premium lager. Right. Or you could think of it as, this isn't balance, it's hop forward, because it's an IPA. And an American premium lager is in balance because it's all malt and no hops. Gotcha. So, Hence the framework. Yeah, yeah. So you could say for an IPA it's balanced, but if you're just thinking about beer across the spectrum, this is really hop forward. Yeah, real yeah. bitter yeah. hop forward. But for an IPA, yeah, this is what you want. You want to taste those malts, but you want that aggressive bitterness there too. 
When you want that, uh, I, I get a lot of the same flavors mm -hmm. as I get from the hop aroma. Right. That, that guava papaya Whatever kind of tropical is. fruit Mango. characteristic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, exactly. And and that's that's something too, like when you're judging, if you get you got to be careful about confirmation bias, where what you think you smell, you taste, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But you also want to find where the things you smell, you do, you kind of do want to taste them. So, figuring out if there's other characteristics that you missed in one one either aroma or flavor, and comparing your notes and kinda. going back to aroma from time to time, like you're not done because you've talked about aroma, you're still gonna, you might taste something that triggers a, a an aroma memory. Right. Yeah. And so after that, it's um, mouthfeel, which is kind of a weird one. Like, mouthfeel yeah. always kind of threw me for a loop. But yeah. what, what is mouthfeel? And I would say it's one of the harder things for people to get right because body is a big piece of it. Is it a full-bodied beer? Is it a light-bodied beer? Our mouths aren't really set up to figure that out very well. Right. You're talking about like specific gravity that remains in a beer, that's kind of what the body is. Is it really thick and syrupy or is it really thin? Your mouth doesn't do necessarily a good job at that because you've got hot bitterness hitting it and everything else. But basically, you know, does it have a pleasant feeling in the mouth? What characteristics are there? Is there alcohol burning your tongue? Is it thin How, and watery? Yeah, yeah. How does it finish, you know? So you jot a few notes there too, and it's not a lot of points. And again, part of that's a reflection because it's kind of hard to really dial in right. mouthfeel. And then at the end of it, you really just want to say, overall, what do you think about this beer? In the context of the style of beer, right. not just in the world of beer and would I buy this every time I sat down. Right. Yeah. Well, and also for the, the overall impression, I always think, well, would I drink another one of these? Yeah. You know, is this is this something that's good for me and we're kind of going against this this baseline and this framework but at the same time we we want to drink what we like too so when we're we're sitting down and we're we're judging a beer step by step like this yeah. and we bring all these concepts back together mm -hmm. it's not something i want more of right yeah and when i do a score sheet a lot of times in that overall impression certainly if you get any kinds of flaws in the process you want to provide some ideas about how they could fix those, or if they're a little bit out of style characteristics, ways that they could get it in, not enough hops, put a little more in, that kind of thing. Um, but also it's like a good a good opportunity to say, hey, I love that beer. And even if it's like stylistically not there and it's scoring low, you can still say, I really like that beer, right. but it wasn't an IPA. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't that framework that I was But if you'd put it against. in as an American Pale Ale, that would have done really well, that kind of thing too. Well, and, and overall for this particular beer, I, I love the hop flavors. I love the hop bitterness. I love how the malt is balanced. Mm -hmm. It's it's not thin and watery, but it's not, doesn't have this big thick mouthfeel either. Right. You know, right. it's it's like yeah. you said, pleasant Yeah. on the tongue. And I'd probably say it's medium mouthfeel. And you know, you can try and look at legs on glassware and stuff like that and get a better idea of actual body, but but yeah, is it, does it work yeah. or not? Does it work? Yeah. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's it. That's yeah. the step by step, huh? Yeah. All right. So, so you know, hopefully you guys had a beer with us and and kind of went down the line and th this order of operations for for beer tasting. You know, we start with aroma, we smell it, we try to define what we smell and and describe it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you look at it and you just say, you know. What's, it's, it's, what's the appearance? A couple characteristics. It's not a big part of the overall piece of what a beer is, but, but it's important too. Right. Uh, and taste it. You know, s try to describe what you taste. Focus on malt characters and balance and hop characters and bitterness. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of pick it apart at that level yeah. all the way down. Yeah, and then you've got that mouthfeel part which can be tricky but again it's another important piece of the overall beer yep. exactly and then you know overall character overall flavor everything like mm -hmm. take all of those pieces that you just went through put them back together and and go hey would I drink another one of these yeah. <laughs> do I like it right. does it does it fit the framework that I'm trying to judge it against mm -hmm. and that's it it's it's as simple as that break it down put it back together 
and and keep it simple yeah and enjoy enjoy it that's the most important part well thank you guys for watching thank you john for joining us Absolutely. and brew on